Welcome to episode 143 of our Family Travel Australia series. This week we are talking all about RV communications, all of the devices that we have tried and tested over our almost three years full time on the road. Plus, we're giving our initial review on Starlink. Is it really worth the money and does it actually work? We spend an awesome few days at an off-grid and very unique campground here in southeast Queensland known as Hangaro, and Paul faces one of his fears. Plus, we give you an update on some massive changes that are currently taking place with our travelling lifestyle. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the big news coming up. G'day and welcome to this week's episode. There has been a lot going on for the feel goods in the last couple of months. So we're gonna to get to the RV communications, which everyone is super keen to find out about. But we just wanna give you a quick update on what's been going on. We've had uh, some family health uh, with Katie's dad in and out of hospital the last little while. Uh, but to give you an update, because we have had a lot of questions around this, uh, he is doing really well, which is great. Yeah, it's been really awesome to be back home, so to speak, to be able to be here for those sorts of things and have some time with family. And thank you to everybody who's reached out to us, sending yeah. your, your thoughts there. Okay, and then on the work front, we have had an amazing amount on. We very fortunately got to speak down there at the International Boat Show. How amazing were some of those boats? Oh my goodness. Uh, this is amazing. <laughs> it's another decimal point to, to get into those. Crazy. But awesome time. Of course, the Let's Go Queensland Caravanning, a super show that was awesome to meet. Many of you out there who came and said hi, thank you for your support. Yes, that was such a fantastic week. Always such a huge buzz down there. Getting to hang out with the team from MSA as well, which Thank is you guys. always a pleasure. And of course, Scotty and Olivia from Creek to Coast, getting to share the stage with those two characters was yeah, awesome Yeah, the real well. TV stars, <laughs> wasn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. And of course, we did a piece on Creek to Coast as well, which was just awesome. And Jasper, of course, was a shining star. <laughs> with that crew, really fantastic. So it has been quite a busy time for us mm. and... Yes, so. for those of you who came to the show and chatted with us there, you would know that we let the cat out of the bag and that we are getting a new setup. We are in the midst of getting a new caravan, which is super exciting. This one behind us is not our new caravan. Very thankfully, our good friend and partner, Paul Pont from Outback Tracks. He's Fantastic. the brains behind all of the Ground Dogs products that we love so much, has very kindly borrowed us, lent us his van for the next little while while we transition into our new one. Thank you so much. This guy's an absolute legend, such an innovator as well, but thank you, mate. And it's so good to have a roof over our heads. Yeah. We've been in and out of hotel rooms and all over the place. <laughs> We've been everywhere, man. So yes, we have moved out of Orange V2 and in other news as well, we will be changing our tow vehicle. Ooh. But all of that we will talk about next week. In fact, we will actually do a bit of a reveal, I think. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Next week, we will be telling you what 
our new caravan is. We are so excited about this. We are actually pinching ourselves. It yep. has been a dream in the making for many, many years. Yes, okay. Mm. We're going to be getting a bit more adventurous. What will it be? Yes, here we go. Off-road. We can give that part away. Everyone knows that we want to do that. All right, we are going to get now to... Actually, before we get into our RV comms, Paul Pont from Ground Dogs has just released a new product. It is called Ground Puppies. This is an absolute game changer mm. for those of you out there that camp and use your outdoor mat, your camp mat. Check this out. There's nothing like finding a need and filling it. And haven't the team at Outback Tracks done that with their brand new product, these ground puppies, the 120 mil alloy pegs designed to make your camping setup that much easier, straight into the ground to safely secure your camping mats with the 10 to 12 mil eyelets. And what makes these so unique is the safety cap that simply slips on top, protects protecting your toes from being stubbed and the 19 mil head that will easily fit your caravan stabilizer winding arm which means you can get the kids involved in setting up as well and with this cute little paw design the kids are going to be lining up to help you set up camp. Visit the Outback Tracks website for details of your closest stockist or order online. Please explain. <laughs> what are you what are you doing, Kate? Like my invention. Oh, this is great. I just need something hard in the other end. But what I'm doing is actually rescuing the plane that you threw on top of the roof. Hey, no need to cast aspersions. Aha! There it is! We have victory! See? Women can do anything! <laughs> happy five-year-old, happy travel day. Yeah. That's the main moral of this story. You right? Right, let's do it. Okay, here we go. The big one, we are talking about RV communications. How we communicate while traveling full-time around Dawes. It's two and a half years down the track for us and we have tried everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly around internet connectivity yeah. because that's a huge one for us, particularly because we are uploading so much content every single mm. week. So it's been super important. The great thing about it is that it has improved greatly over that time. So to think, you know, what's coming next into the future it's amazing. It is amazing. I, I was telling Jasper about when I was a kid, you know, E.T. phone home. <laughs> and beam me up, Scotty. It was like this science fiction future. Yesterday is here today. It is so exciting. It sure is. And there's so many different devices and things mm -hmm. that you can access to really be able to stay connected. What's interesting yeah. is the more we travel, the more we long for becoming more remote, getting out into those outback regions, those really rural areas where you've got those big wide open mm. skies and not a lot of neighbours, but you still need to be connected. In fact, you probably yeah. need to be more connected when you are in those spaces for your own personal safety. So having some of these devices mm. is definitely a recommendation of ours and we'll list through well everything that we've tried since we've been on the road fantastic okay the uh the exciting one of course is starlink from mr elon musk he's a regular viewer for our show hey elon <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be covering off that as well as one of the very first devices that we had and that was the telstra self i go mm -hmm. uh the net gear Nighthawk. Yes, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It, it is. Uh, the personal satellite device, the Garmin InReach Mini. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, we've also got UHF radios. We have one in our vehicle and also some portable ones as well. Mm -hmm. We're also going to talk how we get our mail on the road. That's a big question we get from a lot of people who are planning to hit the road. And probably most importantly, how do you survive in 17 square metres in your relationship? It what really... we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> 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 no, it really is probably one of the most important things yeah. alongside your safety, of course, is learning to live with each other in such a small space. Don't touch me. <laughs> uh, we're also going to cover off the mobile cellular networks because we have run both Optus and Telstra, mm -hmm. so we'll talk about that. Yep. I think that's it. Let's get into it. We will start with the Telstra Selfie Go. We have time-coded every segment of gear below that's right so if you want to jump to a specific piece of kit you'll be able to do that mm -hmm. i'm sure many people out there want to jump straight to the starlink review mm. fantastic and we will get to that shortly let's start though with the telstra selfie go it's this piece of hardware here it's pretty exy i have to say yeah look i i did flip out a little bit when paul said let's get one because it is quite a large outlay at first. I think it was $950. Mm. Uh, okay, a couple of pros and cons. It is locked only to Telstra. Uh, so that can be a bit of a pain for some people, particularly mm -hmm. if you're one's on Optus and one's on Telstra, which is how we actually started traveling around Oz because we thought we were going to hedge our bets, make sure that we, one of us will have coverage mm. at some point because Optus is better in some locations. But hands down, I would say Telstra, now that we've been traveling this long, is the better carrier overall. Tassie was interesting. Mm, Bit yes. of a challenge down there. Yeah, it was the first time around because they were upgrading the Telstra network, which mm. interestingly met my Optus worked a whole lot better than Paul's Telstra yeah. on our first visit. However, this time around, start of this year, we were both on Telstra and had no issues whatsoever. Perfect. Okay. Some other good things about the Telstra Self I Go is that it is a signal booster. In effect, if you are out in the middle of nowhere or you're in a, a more rural area where there's not a lot of cellular coverage, you can get a boosted signal with this device. So the real key here to know is that you absolutely have to have at least one bar. Yes. If you have zero signal, it's not going to boost anything. It'll boost zero. Yes, yeah, really good point and really important to know because I think that can be quite confusing mm -hmm. for people thinking, okay, this little baby is going to actually find me a service yeah. or reception that doesn't exist. It won't do that. No, good point. Um, and generally, we found if we're free camping or we're a little bit more remote, if we're in within five to ten kilometres of that township and mm -hmm. there is a, a tower somewhere, then we generally are going to be able to get a pretty good signal. Now it does run on both 12 volt and 240 volt, yes. which is great because you can just plug it straight into the car or you can plug it into your van as well. Something that we've really been able to enjoy is that we've made it uh, portable. So that is, we're able to actually run it inside the car and if Katie and Jasper are heading off and they're leaving me in the van to do some work, then I'm able to keep that with me. Mm. Um, so what I did is I bought a couple of antennas. This one goes on top of the caravan roof. And then this other little guy here is actually what we use to connect it to the phone. Both of those plug in to the cell phone go and you're away. Awesome. Okay, the next bit of kit is this guy here. It is the Netgear Night Hawk. We actually picked this up from JB Hi-Fi. Yes, we should have shares in JB. We love that store. <laughs> we should actually. <laughs> All right, what was really great about this, and in fact, with a lot of the Telstra offers that JB Hi-Fi offers are better than in-store at Telstra. Mm. I don't know why, but this bit of kit was about $400, but if you signed on for a 24 month plan at $69 a month, you got a $400 in-store credit, which meant that this ended up free. Um, as far as the $69, I think it is the best $69 that we are spending as far as a data plan and getting value for money. 
Oh, for sure it is. When you take into account multiple devices can be connected to this at mm -hmm. the one time. It's a little hub inside our caravan. It's portable. We can take it with us if we need to go and work anywhere. If we're on a travel day and this is in the caravan, I can still connect to it and get a signal as we're traveling and still get work done, which is pretty cool. Fantastic. And it has like 200 gig of data. Yeah. But once you reach that limit, it just slows down. So it's not actually capped. It's unlimited in a way, just the speed is capped. That's mm. right. Uh, now it does have an internal battery which is fantastic, which makes it so portable. Mm. So it's actually on and working now. It isn't locked to Telstra, which is very good. So you can use it pretty well for, for mm. other devices. It does take a SIM card. And so that's how you set up your plan. But yeah, check out JB Hi-Fi if you want to get a good deal on mm. that. Um, I think as far as all the devices that we have had and um, even the actual coverage, this even trumps our mobile phones um, as far as getting better signal anywhere. It's, it's amazing. Mm. As soon as you get out into those rural areas, this isn't going to work anywhere near as well unless you have got a Telstra tower and signal present. Okay? There you go. Great bit of kit. Nighthawk. Okay, mobile phones, fantastic. We actually are both now on Telstra. As we mentioned, we started off with uh, Katie on Optus and myself on Telstra. Mm -hmm. Now we have found that 99% of the time, you're gonna be fine with your Telstra phone. So really yeah. great coverage and coverage where you wouldn't get that with Optus. Yes, yeah, that's mm -hmm. so true. And interestingly, we both Got our plans mm -hmm. again through our favourite store, JB Hi-Fi, but they have some really great deals, particularly with iPhone. We're on iPhone, so we were able to get the mm. latest phones when they came out on their special deals. Um, and I switched over mm -hmm. at the same time that we got the Nighthawk as well. So I just added that to my monthly Telstra plan, which is really easy. Yeah, fantastic. And it just means that we're never even with Jasper watching Bluey on repeat, going to run out of data. Uh, the well, other we shouldn't anyway. No, I don't <laughs> think so. The JB Hi-Fi deals generally give you a, an in-store credit again, so then you can use that against the purchase of the phone. So that's what we like and it worked very well for us. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to Elon Musk and Starlink. Fantastic, the future here today. This is so amazing, it's still I don't know, I still find it hard to get my head around how this is all possible and how it even works, but it does. Okay, what is it? Now, of course, Elon Musk, famous for Tesla, mm -hmm. amongst other things, and now SpaceX and Starlink. It is a low Earth orbit satellite system that is orbiting the Earth at approximately 550 kilometers above our heads. Mm, you can see them. You can, they're like tracer. Um, I guess sort of lights, bullets, that's what it reminds me of when you see them. And if you head outside on a clear night and really look up and take your time, you possibly will see some of these overhead. Mm. Should help click that in. Boom, shakalaka. Now we've got our stomach. All right, oh, let's run it out here. Guy. Very, very cool. Okay, the difference really in these satellites to others is that they are about 60 times closer to Earth which helps with uh -huh. what they refer to as latency, that lag time between information being passed between satellites and ground stations. Now, ground stations are needed to actually make these satellite systems work. And so they are being developed and installed around the world, including Australia. Okay. Currently about, I think it would be about 60% of Australia is actually covered or has coverage. Mm -hmm. But it's believed that Australia will have full coverage for Starlink by the end of 2022. Amazing. It is amazing. There's currently about two and a half thousand of these satellites up there in orbit. And look, I, I think I read right, there's going to be in excess of 40,000. 
Holy dooly. Yes, total world domination from <laughs> Elon. That's amazing. I'm going to have to stop saying to Jasper, what, the speed of light's not quick enough for you <laughs> yes. when he gets cranky for the buffering when he's watching something. The, the interesting thing about this, why are they such low orbit, is because it really does allow for faster and more responsive connectivity. Awesome. Which is very cool. Okay, we've only had really minimal time to test this out. We have had Starlink for approximately three months, mm -hmm. uh, but I've only been able to test it a couple of times. Yeah. Okay, now let's just start with the price point because this does sting a little bit. The hardware was about $850 from memory. Mm -hmm. And you pay that outright. Yes, and it's quite large. It's a little bit larger than what you expect mm. when it arrives. And then it is $139 each and every month, whether you are using it or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> super fast internet, super fast downloads. Uh, we did a little bit of a test there. You can see that now on the screen. Up to 130 megabytes per second download and 20 to 30 upload. Now for us, upload is super important, mm. but look, having that amount of upload versus zero is a huge improvement for us. Oh, for sure. Mm. Yeah, putting those videos up, I mean, we've had situations where we've either had to get in the car with the laptop open and drive until we find a signal yeah. or upload for 24 hours, you know, a tiny percent increase. Yeah. So that will alleviate that, right? Absolutely, because what's happened in the last couple of months is that Starlink is now offering an additional service for an additional cost of $35 per month called portability. And this allows you to have a fixed service address, mm -hmm. but if you're in an RV like us, traveling around the country, be able to move that service to wherever there is coverage available. Got it. Very and this good. is what they've just rolled out in the US, right? Yes, same time. Uh, however, in the US, there is a, a third product offer, which is known as RV Starlink. Right. So I dare say that will come here soon as well. Do I think it's going to change the price point? Probably not. So you're looking at $174 per month. Yes. Now, what are the cons to do with this? And that is around the obstructions. Mm. If you have trees or buildings or a house or the awning or anything that is blocking the direct line of sight to outer space, then this device is not going to work all that good. In fact, in some of our testing, even when we had just under 2% of obstructions, which were these large gum trees around the van, it was still it intermittent. Mm. Only 5.92% obstructed because of those trees. But even with small obstructions, that can cause consistent interruptions. It'll have frequent interruptions to streaming video, web browsing, video calls, or online gaming. Fortunately, online gaming is, a, I think, a disruption to anyone. So we're not going to be doing that. Right. Yeah. So you really need, you need to be in the outback with those wide open spaces. Correct. So for us traveling full time, being reliant on the internet to be able to communicate and get our content out there and to you all at home, this is a game changer. This yeah. absolutely is worth its money. Uh, if you are probably going to spend more of your time along the coastal regions of Australia, I don't think it's worth it. I think you'd be much better with this guy. In fact, out of everything we have, as we've said before, this is our go-to mm. more often than not. It's mm. better than our mobile phones. Quite often it outperforms everything. Uh, the other thing too is that when you get to your campsite, you want to spend more time camping and enjoying the environment than setting up camp. Mm. And so if you were to get to a location and you actually had coverage and, and cellular coverage, then go for the easy option. Mm. Um, the Starlink is fantastic. It does exactly what it says it will do uh, for a price. 
but you would really only use it if you're relying on it, you're traveling full time and you're heading remote locations. Mm. It'll be really interesting to see what happens, the evolution of Starlink, yeah. because wouldn't it be amazing if it got to a point where you literally could carry out, you know, carry the little dish out and put it there and there's no wires or cords or you don't need yeah. to connect up to anything and it just does its amazing Amazingness. Yes. yes. <laughs> Look, it does require 240 volts. So mm. for some people, that will be a deal breaker. Obviously, with lithium baff batteries now and the amount of solar and being able to harness that power and distribute it to your van, mm. um, it's becoming much easier. Power now really isn't a problem if you can afford the lithiums. Yep. So that shouldn't be a problem for most people. I guess the main thing is that out of all of these devices... I think you really need to think about what your application is. Yeah, and, and how reliant you are yeah. on that. I mean, if you're working on the road, which mm -hmm. a lot of people are these days, and you need that connection, then obviously, you know, the, the outlay is is what you need to do to be able to do that. Yeah. But, you know, if it's just because you can't miss your favourite season of Netflix, then maybe you don't need to be spending upwards of $150 a month on something yeah. like Starlink. Okay, I think in time we could get rid of other devices and that value will be uh, more beneficial Yeah, for that's, us. A, that's a really good point because at the moment, you know, we're paying out here and we're paying for that and yeah. we're paying for this and we're paying for that. What I think would be good to do is test over the next six months, six months of yeah. travelling around and really get that good grasp on what we're using Great and where point. we can cut those services off and save money. Fantastic. And the advancements we'll in that. technology are so great at the moment. There seems to be a leap every year. So I think watch this space, some exciting times ahead. Awesome. All right, let's move on to the Garmin InReach Mini. It is the personal satellite device. It's this guy here. We love this device. I think what's so great about it is that it gives you peace of mind for a fairly low cost. It weighs nothing. I mean, you couldn't carry the Starlink on your back, but this thing, you wouldn't even know, you know, the weight is so minimal and it does more than just SOS. Yes, this is packed full of features that I didn't even really know mm -hmm. were there until we started really reading up on it. Mm -hmm. What's so good is that you can communicate on it as you would your mobile phone through sending messages yep. if you're in an area where you don't have service on your mobile phone and you can even preset messages that are quick and easy to send to selected people like mm -hmm. your parents for instance hey we're here safely or we're all good or please send help <laughs> you, you send know? a tow truck <laughs> yes. exactly so you can do that through this device which is really awesome you can also check the weather which i think is another key feature mm. because if you are doing a multi-day trek and the weather is going to be turning bad you're able to check that out you're able to have people trek track your progress as well yeah. and ping your device as they call it so that's a pretty cool function mm. and with the weather if you are doing a multi-day hike you can actually input before you go your destinations on route and it will tell you the weather in advance as well which is really clever very very cool mm. the other thing too is the lithium battery in here on a power save mode it can last up to 20 days which means that it probably out last year. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's so true. I mean, especially if you, again, if you're somewhere where you don't have your cell service, mm -hmm. if you love getting outdoors and you're thinking, okay, we're gonna go and hike. Kings Canyon was a perfect example. No cell service out there at all when yeah. you're doing the rim walk. So we had that with us. It's that peace of mind and Definitely. the outlay like the initial outlay. Look, from memory, we did pick it up on special at BCF or Anaconda, one of those two stores. Yep. And then there's all sorts of different plans that you can choose from so that you're not actually locked into something ongoing. The yeah. plan that we're on is a monthly plan called a Freedom Plan. Yes. I love that. And you can choose to turn it on or off depending on your location. So for $25 a month, when you are remote, Northern Territory, Western Australia. They were the two states that we used it, that's right. Yeah, you can have it on and know that it's there and you've got that peace of mind. And then when you are mm. 
anywhere on the east coast of Australia, you wouldn't need to have it on, obviously. No. So, yeah, how cool is that? And you don't get penalised for turning your plan on or off either. That's great. Mm. Okay, I, I love what they say online. It is that InReach Mini is your go-to connection for man maintaining off-the-grid contact. Mm. Very cool device. Yep. All right, let's now move on to these little guys here. Our two ways. We have spoken about these before. We love these. They're great for when you don't have mobile service and you're wanting to back the vehicle in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't want to be yelling at each other. It looks terrible and it doesn't make for a good start to your, your camping experience. No. Generally too, um, a couple of things on that communication on reversing your van into a campsite. We have a thing called Goal, oh, which yes. was taught to us, which means get out and look if you're the driver. Yeah, that's it. Don't just rely on your helper, your assistant, your passenger, whoever mm -hmm. it is that's going to be helping you reverse in. Actually, just take a minute to get out of the car, have a look at where you're mm -hmm. headed with the van, have a look at what's behind the van. Are there any big trees or other people's vehicles in the way yeah, that you kids. possibly could hit? Exactly. It's so important. And that also takes a little bit of the pressure off the assistant, the passenger, you know, it's not all up to them. You both have eyes on where you're going. I think another really great thing to, to know about these is when you are reversing, getting the spotter um, to talk to the driver and refer to passenger side or driver side. Don't say my right, your left, right hand down. It really can get quite confusing over what, whose hands, which, my hand, your right, your mm -hmm. left. Uh, whereas if you just say, you know, you need to bring the back of the van closer to the passenger side or you, you're gonna, you've got a tree on the driver's side. It's very clear to the driver what you are talking about. Yeah, look, and that's something that we have learnt through trial and error mm -hmm. and the hard way as well in how we get our communication and our lingo going. Yeah. Um, but that one certainly seems to be the best for us so that we're both on the same page. Fantastic. And then for kids, these little unit and... Mm. Uh, you know, I think they're one or two watts. This is a, a little bit more fancy, waterproof, dustproof. It's a five water, but for the kids, you can get these for, um, for really minimal cost. You can get packs of four, mm -hmm. depending on how many kids you've got. Uh, but for Jasper and I to be running around at a campsite or going in getting, you know, firewood and him being able to call into mum, you know, and let her know how we're tracking yeah. is so cool. Copy, Jasper, do you read me? Um, we're just going out walking for firewood and we found a perfect damper stick. Okay, bye. Love you. Love you too, mate. See you soon. Over. You're so beautiful. I love you and you look pretty. It's lots of fun. It'll keep the kids entertained as well. And yeah. Most importantly, if the kids know how to use a radio, mm. if, God forbid, there is ever a situation where you need help and you can't access a radio or a yeah. phone or your Garmin, at least you know that the kids know exactly what to do to pick this up and call for help. Fantastic mm. advice. All right, let's now move on to how do we get our mail? How do we stay communicated with the bank and the bills? copy that. <laughs> it's actually a question we get all the time is about mail from people who are planning their travels. Our best advice is turn as much of your mail as you can into digital. By that I mean get it sent to you on email. It, just about every organisation and business out there these days is environmentally savvy and they want to do good by the environment. So they will have an option for you to get your bills and whatever else is coming into your letterbox into your email box instead. So that's the first tip. Then for other things like parcels and packages, deliveries, because you would know, you know, you don't just set off and then you don't ever need anything again. Oh, there's lots to buy when you're RVing. <laughs> you can get deliveries anywhere around Australia and it Amazing. is super easy through Australia Post. If you jump onto their website and set yourself up with a My Post account, it's free. You cool. just pop in your details and then you can actually get parcels sent to any post office or 
parcel locker where they're available around Australia. So every month we have a doTERRA parcel that arrives. Mm -hmm. We've been in some really random remote places. You know where the post office is a part of the little corner store that's a part of the, the bait and tackle shop and the, the hardware store or, as well? Or it's inside the pub at the back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can still get your mail sent there and it's really, really easy and it gets all tracked through the app and you get SMSs and emails to let you know how it's travelling. So mail on the road is certainly easy mm. and doable. We also have a, a home base address, which is my parents' place, that we use. So for anything that doesn't come through on email, we get it sent there and then I just say to mum, open it and take a photo or send it through to us. So um, that's another good idea as well. Okay, perfect. The final one is one of the questions that we get asked about all the time and that is how do you maintain your relationship? And again, the number one thing that we can suggest is communicate. Yeah. So we wanted to include that. Look. It, it is a fairly tight living space, 17 square metres. We now know each other's triggers inside out. Kate still likes to press them every now and then. I have no idea why. Um, and certainly Jasper as well, you know, he he's probably more adaptable than we are. And we find that with travelling kids, they seem to be able to switch on and off and get back into the groove very quickly, whereas adults seem to, you know, hold on to things. But with this lifestyle, mm. I think the main thing is that you, you communicate, you listen to each other, you, you explain what's going on and and then just walk out the front door and jump in the ocean or breathe in the fresh air or mm. set up your Starlink. Yeah, or, or make a campfire, which we'll be doing <laughs> shortly. But it's so true and just being on the same page and being aware that there are lots of stresses with this lifestyle as well, you know. It is an amazing lifestyle, but if you're doing it for the first time, like we were, learning all of those new yeah. things that come with towing and hitching and setting up an awning and, you know, feeling the pressure of other campers looking on, you know, there are definitely times that you will have those triggers sure. with your relationship. Mm -hmm. So our best advice is work together and have a have communication that works for you. It doesn't matter what old mate next door says to you about, you know, say this when you're reversing or, or you know, this is the way, this is the lingo. As long as you guys are on the same page, that's all that matters, yes. honestly. Happy wife, happy life. Well, that's the other thing, you know. Always listen to your missus because guaranteed she'll be right most of the time. I know, I've been trying <laughs> to tell Jasper that, you know. He's still trying to negotiate with Katie. I'm like, don't do it. No, but in all seriousness, we, you have those moments. We still have those moments, you know, we're not mm. um, anything unusual. We have the same relationship that we would have if we were living in a much bigger four-walled apartment or house. But get outside, being outside in this environment is amazing. It's so good for you anyway. All right, talking about this environment, we are at an incredibly awesome looking camp area known as Hangar O. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to bring you this beautiful campground. Located in a little place known as Ganelda. It's about 30 minutes up the road to Maryborough, 30 minutes down the road to Gympie, two and a half hours from Brisbane. Run by Darren and Sam, this place is truly spectacular. Mm -hmm. And these guys are amazing. What they've done here on this property is just awesome. Sam's an architect 
and she has designed all of the buildings that are at Hangar Row and Darren has made them which makes the story so much more appealing. Amazing. As far as camping goes you can bring your RV, your camper trailer, even your swag or your tent and come. Mm -hmm. It's fully off grid so there is no power or water available so good to know to be prepared with your full tanks and obviously your solar in place but you can rock on in and basically pick your own campsite from the massive camping area they have that mm. adjoins the creek front and it literally is the greenest grassiest campground we have seen in a long long time so much beautiful old growth trees as well so there's lots of shade particularly if you are coming in summer if you're not bringing your RV with you though, you can still come and experience really unique accommodation options that they've created here that are uniquely hangar row. There mm. is the Billa Box, which is just gorgeous. There's also little tripods and they have a series of luxe glamping tents for couples and also ones that are join for families as well. And then as well as that, there is a self-contained studio apartment that is located up in the pool area, which in itself is just amazing. It is like a mini resort, mm. the studio and pool area. You could certainly come here and spend the best part of a week yep. unplugging, relaxing, watching the yellowtail black cockatoos fly by, mm -hmm. or one of many of the rescued kangaroos that Sam and Darren have lovingly looked after and cared for back to health and then released to the wild. Every one of their release animals comes and visits them <laughs> every afternoon for that sneaky little bit of attention and milk, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, the pool area is fantastic too. Mm. It's a 25 meter pool. They also have some hot showers up there as well. So if you are you know, camping and you don't have your own facilities, you can go up there for a nice sneaky hot shower. Now they also do have barista style coffee, mm -hmm. a licensed bar down at Hangar Row, the main hangar area. Mm -hmm. uh, the coffee kicks off around 7.30 every morning. Seasonally, and I think also on weekends, they do also offer in-house massages. Ooh, Anisha, amazing, a Thai style, a little bit of a mix of Swedish style massage. I can tell you that that was pretty amazing from the last time that we actually stayed here in one of the family Lux tents. Mm -hmm. My turn for a massage next time. <laughs> Definitely. All right, the other highlight this trip and some incredible footage that we'll leave you with was Darren offering to take me up in his ultralight plane and look around the wider Gympie region and fly over the property. Whew, my heart was racing. It was once in a lifetime opportunity and incredible. You have to come visit Hangar Owen. Maybe if you're nice to Darren, he'll take you up for a joy flight. <laughs> Unreal. Their slogan here is escape mm. the ordinary. And that is exactly what you can expect. Mm -hmm. A new place, a new home. For a while, let me feel alive Nothing to hold me back Take my time, just enjoy the ride I know man, passing by Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in it
Totally wow! I uh, I don't, don't do know what to say. I've never that. done anything like that before. Check that. That was the uh, the power behind my backside that was uh, making me feel a bit nervous, if I'm honest. But what an experience! I think this is something everyone has to do once in their lifetime. How was that? Unbelievable! You have to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm happy to watch you. Oh, how did it look from the ground? Amazing. Oh my God. My heart was racing. I even said to Darren, I, he said, how are you feeling? And I said, I, I didn't use what I was going to say. I was absolutely my pants, but it, it was so exhilarating. And then once you're up there, I mean, on the way back, we're doing 140 kilometers now, almost, you know, 70 knots. And because of the altitude, you just don't feel it. But you know, it's remarkable. We landed one and a half minutes ago and now i'm back at the van yeah imagine owning a property and being able to fly your own plane in and out of it what a gift so awesome what, what a, a smooth landing too that was amazing yeah it it, it doesn't it, it's definitely smooth but it's bouncy you know like it's um yeah Whew. heart racer i can't wait to see the footage awesome <laughs> hi, hi. Mm. thanks for watching please do like subscribe and share our channel and if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails. How good is mum? So good. How good is dad? Not as good as mum. Wow. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Are you kidding? I'm not being silly. The that is an excellent friendship rock. It's a it's an M and M. What does it say? Let's do. Let's do. Exploring five. It actually means go. Go. Let's, let's go. Okay. Does it? Well, that is one of the best friendship rocks I think that we have ever you we, have we ever found. A uh, message back to him. Yeah, and say thank you. Mm -hmm. So your friendship rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe this, Mum? 
Oh, here she comes, Captain Kindling.